Hello everybody and welcome to a new episode of the Unity Tutorials for the Tower Defense series. In this episode we're going to learn about how we can create animations for our enemies. Uh, whether it's a moving animation or an attacking animation. Let's dive into it. The first thing we need to do is we have to make sure that we have the animation frames. And by frames I mean the images. So. Um, if we go into our enemies, we see we have two prefabs here. We have the enemy 1 and the enemy 2. We have a bee-like uh, flying thing and we have a slug. And we're using these assets for the enemies. So we have the bee and the slug. If we open the bee, we, we see that we have multiple images in here. Sadly, we have no attacking animation, but we will make one our own but we have something that loops into what we see is a flying animation the same thing goes to the slug if we open these images uh, I don't think you can see them because they're too small but they basically uh, iterate the moving mechanics so what we're gonna do is we're gonna have to mainly work on the prefabs that we have the first thing we have to do is we have to create a folder named animation I know. So, um, and make another folder, call it enemies. We just want to be as thorough as possible. Let's make something called slug. Inside the slug, we will create something called animator controller. Let's call it slug animator. That's very good. So, the first thing we have to do before we edit is open the slug prefab and then add the animator controller as a part of the prefab and then we have to uh, assign the controller that we created we either drag and drop it or open this one here and then look at search for slug since we only have that one we just select it that's very uh, good to start working with the animation we need two important windows we need the animator and the animation the animator is here I have it already set up in this area if you don't have it just go in window general wait is it general oh no sorry it's animation and animator same thing goes to the animation I have it set up in the bottom side so what we're we gonna do is we have to after we assign the animators we click on the enemy to which is the prefab that has the animator component and then click on animator when we open it up we have this setup so I just want to drag this here uh, I'm gonna talk briefly uh, about the animator so the animator houses was called animation states and animation states is basically a container that contains the animation and other like uh, settings and every animation state has an entry point and exit point and we will see this in a second here so right now those are the states and we have no animation states uh, uh, sorry those are the main state navigators and we have no animation states in order to create a new animation state we can do it in different ways we can either right click let's say in here create animation or right click here create empty or just manually work from here but I'm gonna walk and do this simple one here let's go create new state it's gonna come out as a new state and it directly you'll see there's a line here what this means is every animation animator has to have a default state and it's a commonly used that the default state would be the idle animation and idle animation is the animation for the character or the um, way where like you're standing still or if you're flying with a one-way flying so when we click on this one let's rename it to I will just call it uh, walking right because I think in this game I'm gonna be using walking as an uh, as a main one because our character the enemies they don't stand still they just walk so the default one will be walking so this is the container which is the animation state and if you look here it has a motion of none and the speed of one which is the default speed 
in order to create a motion and by motion I mean animation so we select this one here and the, at the bottom part we see the animation window we have have it grayed out because we have nothing yet so the first thing we have to do is it says to begin animating enemy to create an animation clip so we can either do as I did before here create animation or click create so this will prompt us a new window um, we will be working on the walking right let's name it slug walking let's go into the animations enemy slug here we go let's save it right here as soon as we do this we see more things that comes to life I want to talk about the toolbar here this is the I would say edit toolbar where you can play fast forward go back the one underneath is where you select the animation that you want since we created this one we have it here we can create more by clicking create new clip and add it there I did a small mistake and that mistake is I did create this by, st by default so when I created a new animation it did create a new container so I was just d uh, describing how to create one so let's delete the old one or you can just simply drag and drop this one here but I just want to delete it and this will become our default clicking on the enemy again making sure that the slug walking is selected let's start doing animations and when I say do animations we don't have to worry about like you know moving body parts or something because it's all 2d and basically 2d is a big it's 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 an array of images going one by one like cartoons since we're going with the slug let's open the folder of the slug and we have these four frames one way we can do we can drag and drop one of them but let's just select all of them and then drag and drop them in here as soon as you do this you'll see you got these four dots these are called keyframes and in every animation we have frames and frames do change the um, the state or not the state the attributes of the object so right now we're changing the attribute of the object that relates to sprite and it's basically changing the sprite component of a sort the sprite item in the sprite component sprite renderer uh, we can in, in I mean enlarge this to see what's happening and then uh, if you click here and click F it will maximize the view to match the length of the animation right now we have these four stuff set up in here in order to see the results you can either open the scene or put the, put it side by side I think uh, let's just open the scene so we can see here that we have stuff happening let's play it if we play it we see it's going way too fast that's because if you see on the top side this is in seconds it's going in way too fast to speed it's not even reaching one second so what we're gonna do is we're gonna increase it in a sense to make it look natural so what we can do to do it I say a lot of do's the easy way to do this is if you can click control A and it will select all the keyframes and then increase it all the way until you reach your desired um, length I'm gonna do it one second maybe it's too much but let's see how it works yeah it does look like a decent speed if I'm not mistaken the slug moves slowly again if you have a different speed you can if you have it faster just reduce it to half a second or whatever that helps you and it will look like it's moving faster but because I have the slug speed as a I would say slowish so I'm just gonna keep it as one second one of the stuff when you do an animation is let's go back here click on this one click on the slug double click on it it's here is loop time so some of the animations you want to create you want it to be loopy you want it to play over and over again and this applies for our walking animation which is fine but sometimes you want to make sure that keep an eye on this stick right here let's say you want to do a, a strike animation and the strike animation only plays once so make sure to untick it for the animation that you want to play only once 
and by default it comes as loopy. So that's done. What we can do is we can see how it works. And I'm gonna play the game and hopefully we will see a slug come right here with its animation. So forget about this one. We want the slugs. Here we go. So yeah, here comes the slug. I think the speed looks decent enough. Yeah, I think it needs to be slightly slower, which is not a big deal. So if I go here, I have to increase this maybe just another half a second. I think that's good enough. Um, <clears throat> so we've done the slug moving. As I said, sadly we have no attacking animation. But I will teach you something that actually you can do. Like, I would say like a workaround if you have nothing. And maybe you can replace it later on. So let's go back to the scene. Click on enemy tool. And let's create a new clip. Call it slug attack. Right? Let's make sure it's put in the proper folder. And as I said, I want the slug attack to be played once. So let's untick the loop time. Here we go. So we open the animation after selecting the enemy tool, which is a slug, and we have to navigate to the attack. Attack is basically an empty animation. Since we don't have a, a uh, what is it called, uh, images for the slug attacking, like you know, shooting something or just you know hitting with the eyes. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create our own kind of a you know animation and what I thought about is I would use the existing sprite and just scale the object back and forth like you know it's like doing this something like this so how this will look like is something like this you know like two so it, it, it goes to one and then does this attacks and then attacks again so to do this what we need to do is let's select the first frame and click add keyframe this one wait what oh my bad so uh, before we add keyframes we have to determine what do we want to change since I just said that we want to change the scale and scale is part of the transform so we need to add transform as a property so we click on add property here we click on transform and add scale now we have by default it adds a one second of nothing so it added this here so you have to first of all expand this to see the values in here and then you'll see that the value if you keep drag and dropping here from 0 to 1 the values are remain one by one which is fine so what we need to do is we need to determine how fast attack speed should be I would say it should be somewhere between half a second to a third of a second so I will just go with a half a second which is 30 milliseconds we, we need to determine a couple of things um, we need to make sure that the animation that we do starts from a place and ends at the same place so we have a seamless animations what I mean by this let's say you want to make an animation of a jumping right so if you jump upwards and then remain up there it will just flip down when it ends so we want to make sure that we jump and then we go back to the same place and it already does this for us by adding the first frame and the last frame which are the same value so in between I want to make sure that the slug it contracts and then expands and goes back you know like this so let's start doing the contract so let's go ahead and say at the 10 milliseconds we need I want to work on the x-axis by the way so we, we need it to be 0.9 right so what happens if I go here it will look like this right which is fine again if you have some values you don't want to modify just delete them here I'm, I'm deleting the z and the y and it turns the, directly to default so what happens like at this 10 millisecond it contracts and then I want it to expand quickly so I want it to become here bigger than its usual so I want to make, make sure it's 1.1 1 .1. so let's see how it works 
it does it does look like something we want to do yeah again you can do it faster you can bring this up in here to 20 and make sure that this is faster and it, this way we can have a faster animation but I want to keep it like this uh, that looks fine so this is one of the ways we can modify the like create our own kind of a transform animation you can change other stuff but now we have to worry about the transform so we have the slug attack and the slug walking let's apply the same thing to our B right so we have B we do the same thing over again we create an animator call it B animator and we can do the whole thing quickly without going back in here we can create an animation call it B what uh, let's call it flying and you can actually go you can so you can just click on this one make sure it's loop and then create another animation call it B attack that's done we go back to the prefab which is enemy one and then you can drag and drop this stick in here or on the object it will directly happen like this and then since we haven't linked the animations in here all we have to do is just drag and drop these two and put them in here let's make sure that the flying is the main one and how to do this is we need to like track drop from here till here sorry not like set machine default state to this one or you can right click and set default by here one by clicking this button here so um, we set up the animation state let's start do the flying for the B we have to navigate to the B's folder and grab all these eight frames and I would assume it looks fast yeah it does so let's increase it to maybe one second probably yeah that looks good enough now that's done let's go create the attack and we'll do the same thing over by adding this one here removing the Y and Z and make sure it's half a second and in here what we can do is we can either add a frame or we can just directly change this one and it will automatically add the frame and in here we'll make 1.1 and yep I mean you can do it this way you can do it other way you can make it rotate it's all up to you so let's close this and play the game and then we'll see our animations come to life here we go we got a slug walking slowly and then still waiting for the fly okay oh wow that's just bad luck okay never mind you can do it like this let's grab <laughs> grab this one put it here if you play the game you will see the fly actually moves in with its animation which is looks very cool all right um, we have learned how to apply animations to our towers uh, sorry our enemy later on I think in next videos we'll learn how to apply the attack animation but for now I hope you liked this video and if you did hit the like and subscribe also hit the bell to get the latest notifications and uh, I wish you all the best and I'll see you in the next one bye bye